<coughs> so did it go on? Are we live? All right, well, it's time to begin our service this morning. I'd like to welcome each and every one to the house of the Lord. If this is your first time, we're glad that you're here. Never a stranger in God's house, only a visitor one time. And then after that, you're just part of the family. Amen. And as a family, we've gathered together today to worship the Lord. And I'm glad that the Apostle Paul said, I, I would that men pray everywhere, lifting up holy hands without wrath and without doubt, letting us know that it's okay to worship God lifting up our hands and not only our hands but our voices 
and our hearts to him, the one who is worthy to receive all the praise and all the glory and all of the honor. So why don't we stand on our feet? Let's open up this service in prayer by going before the Lord and asking him to have his way in this service this morning. Loving God, we come to you and Father as we do in your presence. We lift up to you our hearts, our hands, and our voices. God, where we stand this morning, ready to worship you, ready to honor you, ready to give you the, the sacrifice of praise that you are so wonderfully worthy of this morning. Have your way in this service, in our hearts, and in our lives. Move and challenge us afresh in every way. God, to draw closer to you, and we'll give you all the glory and all of the honor in the wonderful and glorious name of Jesus for your glory. Amen and amen. Let's give the Lord a round of applause this morning. God is good and wonderfully worthy is he to be praised. Amen. Jesus, we love you. We magnify you. We appreciate you. Have your way in your wonderful name. Amen and amen. Found on page 263 or you can follow along. On the screen, we're going to sing that song, He Set Me Free. How many are glad to be free this morning? Standing fast in the liberty wherein Christ makes us free. Amen. He set me free. Let's sing it as unto the Lord this morning. Well, once like a bird in prison I dwelt. Well, no freedom from my sorrow I felt. But Jesus came and listened to me. Glory to God, He set me free. He set me free, yes, He set me free. He broke the bonds of prison for me. I'm glory bound, my Jesus, to see. Oh, glory to God. But Jesus came and listened to me. Glory to God, he set me free. He set me free, yes, he set me free. He broke the bonds of prison for me. I'm glory bound, my Jesus, to see. Oh, glory to God, he said. One more time, he set me free. He set me free. He broke the bonds of prison for me. I'm both rebound my Jesus to see. Glory to God. He set me free. If you're glad to be free this morning and you know it, why don't you raise your hands, your hearts, and voices to him. Thank him for the liberty wherein Christ makes free this morning. Jesus, we thank you, we love you, 
God, for the freedom that you have made us free with, God. We thank you, God, that we can stand fast in that liberty. God, not being entangled again with the yoke of bondage. God, free to worship you in spirit and in truth. Free to worship you in the beauty of holiness. God, free. God, to stand in your presence with our feeble hands uplifted to you. God, because they're no longer weighted down by the weight of sin, but we have been made free, set free uh, by the spirit of the law of the liberty of life in Christ Jesus. God, have your way this morning in this service in the wonderful and glorious name of Jesus for your glory. Amen and amen. Let's give the Lord another round of applause this morning. God is good. Greatly and wonderfully worthy is he to receive all the praise and all the glory and all of the honor. Amen and amen. All right. You may be seated this morning. It is good to be back in God's house. I'd like to welcome each and every one. And if this is your first time, we're glad that you're here. Again, never a stranger in God's house, only a visitor one time. And after that, just part of the family. And, uh, and as a family, uh, we, we worship God together. And I'm glad that God, uh, the Word of God declares that Jesus died for all of us. Amen. He didn't just die for some of us. The Bible says He tasted death for all men. Amen. He died for all of us. And uh, He came to make of all of us one group of people. And that group of people is a people a group of people that love God and love one another. Amen. God is what makes a difference in all of our lives, and we're thankful for that difference that He does make. Amen. Amen. He He made us who were once unlovable, and that's what I was at one time. I was unlovable. I didn't even love myself. I hated myself. You know what I'm saying? And because I hated myself, guess what? I hated others. You know what I'm saying? I just hated life. Uh, and... Uh, you know, I mean, I, I, was too, I was too afraid to die, so I was enduring life until one day, one day I got saved. And Jesus gave me a real reason to live, amen? He gave me a real reason and a real purpose to live for, and that's what He does for all men, amen? And that's why it's said that really life doesn't really begin until we get saved, amen? The Bible says, you were dead in your trespasses and sins, but you who were once dead in trespasses and sins, he said what? He has what? Quickened us together, meaning he has brought us back from the dead. Amen. He has made us alive, alive to God. And uh, because we're alive to God, now we have a wonderful purpose to live. Amen. And so God is good. I'd like to remind you that uh, uh, we are going to be going into uh, revival services sometime this month. And we're saying it this way because... Uh, the preacher who's going to be coming in, Reverend Love, whew, Reverend Love, is going to be uh, 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 preaching in St. Louis first, and uh, he's scheduled there for a week, at least a week, and then... <laughs> and then, now, uh, normally... We have a nursery, but because of this COVID thing and whatever else, um, we're not we're not doing the nursery right now at Children's Church, and so uh, uh, please bear with uh, the infants being in service this morning. It's not a bad thing; it's a good thing. Amen. Jesus told us to uh, not forbid the little ones to come to Him. All right. In fact, He tells us as adults. He said, "What." Except ye be converted and become like them. And he was, he was directing our, our attention to children. All right. Uh, he said, really, our chances of getting to heaven are very slim. You know what I'm saying? Because there's just something about a child. They are very quick to forgive. You know what I'm saying? They don't hold grudges. You know, you take their toy and, you're, and you're, they're, you know, I was, uh, I, I was amazed. I saw two brothers fighting one another. And it was all over a phone. One wanted the phone, and the other one wasn't going to give it to him. You know what I'm saying? And then, you know, after a while, the phone wasn't that important anymore. And 
and now they were back to what loving each other and and whatever so you know I'm glad that God gives us the ability to forgive one another amen and not only forgive but forget our past wrongs because you know there's nothing worse than having that those those same wrongs that we did 500 years ago uh, thrown right back in our face in other words thank you for reminding me of the failure I used to be all right I'm, I'm glad that that's all you ever remember about me is my past failures you know what I'm saying don't look at my good today just look at my failures from yesterday and in your eyes I always will be a failure you know what I'm saying well that's not the way God is thank God for that he has this C the C S E A is called the sea of forgetfulness amen as far as the east is from the west he said what I will remember your sins no more all right and so thank God that God is that way anyways and and we get to be like God so we can be that way too all right all that to say what please be patient with us all right and uh, we are to endure a long time God is long stuff see look at all these these allegories uh, God, you know, God helps us to be like Him. Long-suffering, patient, kind, good-hearted, and uh, happy and free. All right. Amen. So, revival coming up sometime this month uh, after uh, what, God gets, what God does in St. Louis. And what I mean by that is if they go one week, if they go two weeks, and if, if God wants to go a month, we're all right with that over there. Amen. Amen. And then what they could do is just bring it right on over here. And maybe God will go a month over here too. And maybe two months. And maybe maybe God will send it from here to other parts of the country. And guess what? Maybe we'll stop hating one another and start loving one another again. All right? That sounds better, doesn't it? All right. Well, anyway. All right. But God is good. So pray for the upcoming revival. That's something that... All of us can do. Amen. We can all pray. You know, you can't you can't hate someone you pray for. You can't you can't be angry at someone that you pray for. And so really prayer is the answer, isn't it? Prayer is the answer. Alright, so pray for our country, pray for our community, pray for our loved ones and and whatever. Pray for revival. Amen. I'd like to also remind you of service tonight. At 7:30. Now we're going to do something a little uh, normal. It's normal. Normally, this is what we do, but we haven't had really normal services here since we reopened. And uh, of course, now my. Uh, but we're going to do a special this morning, and so we're going to let our sister come and sing to us this morning, and then uh, we'll come and preach that which we feel God has laid upon our hearts. Sunday evening worship tonight at 7:30, and. Uh, those of you uh, that are uh, live streaming this morning um, we're glad that you're there we wish that you were here but we understand and um, we're just glad that you're here with us one way or the other amen and this COVID thing is rearing its ugly head again all right in fact I know a few folks that have been uh, contracted with it and so just be mindful be mindful. Wash your hands often. All right. Instead of shaking hands, you know, do the fist bump or the elbow bump or the shin kick or the head bump. No, no, no head butt, nobody, okay? All right. We're friendly people. All right. But just be mindful. We don't we want to be friendly. We want to share the good news, but we want to share the good news, not the bad news. You know what I'm saying? The bad news meaning I got COVID and I want to give it to you. No, I don't want your COVID, okay? All right. Okay, but, and, and we're just making, we're having fun, really, kind of, you know, but it is serious, okay? So, all right, and pray for those uh, who uh, may, you may know that have it, because I talked to a, a person not too long ago who had it, and as soon as I heard them speak, I said, hey, we're not going to do that, because they were having a difficult time breathing, all right? Very difficult time breathing, so much so that, I called them the next day and the next day afterwards to find out how they were doing, all right? And so pray for them. And uh, we will, after our sister uh, sings, before we preach or um, while we preach or whatever, 
uh, we'll, we'll pray for those that we know that uh, have been diagnosed with it, all right? Okay, at this time we're gonna ask our sister to sing and then we'll uh, come and, and do whatever God wants us to do after that, all right? God bless you ladies. said you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free hmm. how many believe that Jesus is still the healer today if you believe it why don't you stand with me and let's pray for uh, people that we know that need to be touched right now and we're not going to mention names there are some uh, who have been diagnosed with COVID there are some that have been diagnosed with other things that are very serious very serious and, and they need a touch from God they need a miracle from God and no doubt they want a miracle from God and so why don't we go before the Lord on behalf of these, we're not going to mention names. They know who they are. We know who they are. And that's all that matters. We want to protect perhaps their privacy. But at the same time, we want uh, to help them get God involved in their situation. Amen. Loving God, we come before you right now. God, as your word declares that we can. He says in your word that we can enter boldly into your throne room where we can find grace in a time of need. And God, today we need, number one, grace for this time of need, especially in the lives of those that we love and appreciate, those men and women, those brothers and sisters in the Lord. God, who have been diagnosed with something uh, 
perhaps unwanted, maybe can be considered to be bad news, but God, you are God, uh, the one who is able to turn the bad into good. And so, God, we're looking to you to work your miracles in the lives of these, God, these people that uh, we are not ne necessarily going to mention the name of, God, but you know exactly who they are. Reach down to where they are right now. Touch them with your healing hand, your healing power. God, touch them with your glorious presence. For in your presence there is liberty and fullness of joy. Return to them, God, the joy of your salvation. Set back, God. Rebuke the adversary. God, their enemy and our enemy and your enemy. The one that wants to afflict them with sorrow and sickness and disease. God, God, rebuke that devil. Rebuke that sickness. Remove it from their body, from their life, from their heart and mind. And God, let them be able to lift up to you hands that, hang, uh, that are lifted up. God, hands that are lifted up uh, in liberty and freedom. God, knowing, God, the fullness of your power and of your goodness and of your might. Accomplish your will in their bodies, in their heart, in their mind, in their soul, in their spirit. And God, do the same for each and every one of us here this morning. God, we need you more than we need anything else. God, have your way, therefore, in this service, in our lives, in our hearts and soul. God, and in the hearts and lives and souls of all that are under the sound of our voice. God, whether here or out there in Facebook land somewhere, God, meet their need from the very northern state of Alaska all the way down to the very southern state of Florida and from the very eastern states of the east coast and the west coast of our country. Have your way not only in this country, but around this world, God. God, we need you as men. God, as man, we need you moving today move today accomplish your will in Jesus' wonderful and glorious name for your glory amen and amen let's give the Lord a round of applause this morning I can tell you God is good you may be seated this morning I want to read uh, out of Galatians chapter 5 That's not my Bible reading this morning. I don't know what happened. When I opened up my presentation to follow around here, for whatever reason, it did not bring what I typed in this morning. So let me just go to here. Do I even have the title right? No, the title's right. All right, but anyways, praise God. All these things that are made to be helps, and they're not helps, they're hurts. They're not even hurts. Galatians chapter 5. The only problem with it is my Bible here is kind of holy. Meaning, oh, there it is. Okay, I found it. Beginning to read in verse... One, stand fast, therefore, in the liberty wherewith Christ hath made us free, and be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. Behold, I, Paul, say unto you, that if ye be circumcised, Christ shall profit you nothing. For I testify again to every man that is circumcised that he is a debtor to do the whole law. Christ is become of no effect unto you, whosoever of you are justified by the law, you are fallen from grace. For we through the Spirit wait for the hope of righteousness by faith. For in Jesus Christ neither circumcision availeth anything, nor uncircumcision, but faith which worketh by love. The only thing that really matters this morning is what? Our faith. Our faith. Why does that matter this morning? 
Does anybody have an answer to that question? Yes, ma'am. So without faith, it's impossible to please God. That's true. Absolutely true. That's what the Bible says, right? Without faith, it's impossible to please Him. But that's not what I was looking for. Is there anybody else who can answer that question? The Bible says that we are saved by grace through what? Faith. Through faith. So without faith, we can't be saved. Right? The grace of God is there. But if you don't believe it, you're not going to receive it. And so our faith is important. The only thing that matters is our faith. You know what I'm saying? Because that's where it all begins. In fact, it wasn't until we took God at his word that we even knew God. We came to a relationship with God by, by what? By ceasing to call him a liar. Right? Isn't that what we were doing before we got saved? We called God a liar. Some people call, call God a liar even while they're saved. You know what I'm saying? I did. Say, preacher, what are you talking about? I used to say God can meet all my needs. But the way I lived my life, I was saying God can meet all my needs, but not without my help. God needed my, poor God needed my help to meet my needs. You know what I'm saying? You understand what I'm saying? God, I, can, I believe that you can meet all of my needs, right? But not without my help. And so one day, after five years of trying to be God in my life, you know what I'm saying, trying to work out all of my problems, and at the same time asking God to work them out, but not really letting God work them out, I finally, after, <laughs> after years and years of trying, I finally gave up. I said, God, I quit. I quit trying to be you in my life, and I'm going to let you be God. And God, if you can't take care of me, no one else can. And you know what? In a matter of just a few weeks after that, God solved all my problems. He did what I was trying to do, and, and finally, the greatest revelation in my life was, uh, I didn't need to do it. All I needed to do was just get out of the way and let God do it. You know what I'm saying? And sometimes that's all we need to do. Casey, good morning. Good to see you, okay? All right, the little one. Okay. Anna, always good to see you, honey, okay? All right. For in Jesus Christ, neither circumcision availeth anything nor uncircumcision, but faith which worketh by love. You did run well. Who did hinder you that you should not obey the truth? This persuasion cometh not of him that calleth you. A little leaveneth, leaveneth the whole lump. That's why we need to keep our eyes on Jesus. We don't need to get our eyes on what's going on out there in the world. Because what's going on out there in the world is a bunch of confusion. Yes. And it's designed to confuse us. It's designed to get us hating one another. Angry at each other. You know what I'm saying? But thank God for the truth. And the truth is what this morning? What is the truth? God is love. And the truth is, God loves you this morning. And God loves me this morning. You know what I'm saying? And God cares. He does. And God, 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 God just said, He's sitting up there in heaven and says, Say, man, if they would just let me do what I want to do for them, they would be so much happier. You know what I'm saying? But let's go on. All right. I have confidence in you through the Lord that ye will be none otherwise minded. But he that troubleth you shall bear his judgment whosoever he be. Whosoever spreading lies. God said in his word, hey, he's going to bear that. You know what I'm saying? And, 
Anyways, let's go on. And I, brethren, if I yet preach circumcision, why do I yet suffer persecution? Then is the offense of the cross ceased. I would there, I would they were even cut off, which trouble you. For brethren, you have been called unto liberty. Only use not liberty for an occasion to the flesh, but by love serve one another. For all the law is fulfilled in one word, even in this, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Man, what a wonderful world this would be if we would just do that. But if ye bite and devour one another, take heed that ye be consumed or be not consumed one of another. This I say then, walk ye in the Spirit, and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. I want to redirect your attention back to verse 1 this morning, where I'm going to take from my text. Stand fast, therefore. In the liberty wherewith Christ hath made us free, and be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. And with the help of the Lord this morning, we want to speak to you on the title, What Does Freedom Mean? What Does Freedom Mean? Reverend Burgess, would you please stand and pray with the message and the messenger this morning, and ask the Lord's blessing. Amen. All right. Let me just see if I could do something real quick here. I don't know why this didn't work earlier. Please forgive our delays. So what, what is up there now? The title? Okay. All right. Again, technology. And, and we're trying to do this because the people out there in Facebook um, land, um, they don't get to see everything that you do. And so we're trying to make that available to them and, um, uh, and whatever. So all of these things and... and uh, whatever so we do appreciate your patience with us and sometimes it goes without a, a glitch and sometimes it doesn't so. what does freedom mean for every real there is a counterfeit something can't be a counterfeit if there's not a real something of the counterfeit, right? How would you know you had a counterfeit $5 bill if there was no such thing as a $5 bill? You know what I'm saying? You know, love, love is real. But for a lot of people, love is kind of, you know, it's not really love, is it? Their definition, I mean, and there's been a lot of songs that have been written about love. Love hurts, love wounds. You picked a fine time to leave me, Lucille. You know, and all these other songs. I don't now. I'm kind of, I'm kind of telling my age. You know what I'm saying by singing those songs. But all right, maybe I am. If you don't 
if you never heard those songs maybe because you're not of the same time period in which i'm saying it's kind of like star wars in a lot in a time in a time far uh in a, a time long ago and in a place far far away is that caleb or james that's james preacher a young preacher man in the making see he's already crying out the loud voice. that's what it means to preach preaches and getting up here and talking preaching is proclaiming all right he was proclaiming i don't know if he was proclaiming good or bad there though you know what i'm saying it's hard to differentiate between the two sometimes all right well, let's go on for every real there is a counterfeit and so it has been said that there are two kinds of freedom the real and the not real the true and the false true freedom is found in one place and that one place is not America but it is in Christ now we thank God for America we're not we're not I mean uh, we do we thank God for this land because we have the freedom to learn about Christ here Amen. now there are some that want to take that freedom away from us and they're going to get their way one day and the reason why we know that is because the Bible tells us uh, that there's coming a time perilous times will come right men will give way to what teachers having itching ears they will become what lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God they will become what disobedient to their parents it's not going to get better it's going to get worse all right and one reason why it's going to get worse is because preachers uh, will fail to preach the truth they'll get involved in everything else but preaching the gospel you know what I'm saying we don't need anything else but the gospel. David the psalmist said, Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. When we have the word of God in our heart and in our life, uh, then we have really everything we need. I need food and I need water to live on this earth but you know whether I live or die if I'm in Christ everything's going to be all right correct and Jesus said if any man believe in me though he were dead yet shall he live and so true freedom is found in one place it is found in Christ. The Bible says, Stand fast therefore in the liberty wherewith Christ hath made us free. And be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. In John chapter 8, we read these words. And you shall know the truth. And the truth shall make you free. They answered him, we be of Abraham's seed. You know, we're Americans. And we, and we're never in bondage to any man. I was born free. Born free. As free as the wind blows. Oh. As free as the grass grows? <laughs> All right. I was born free. They said, We be of Abraham's seed and were never in bondage to any man. How sayest you shall be made free? Now they lied to them. They were lying to themselves because they were in bondage to the Romans at this time. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> How do I know? Well, because, you know, remember when Jesus was, was, uh, 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 still preaching they said hey you're going to have to shut this man up because we uh, the, 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 the Romans are going to come and take what 
take our freedom from us. You know what I'm saying? They're going to they're gonna come and, and, and put us in bondage. Because he says he's a king. And we have no king but Caesar, right? Isn't that what they said? Yes. Okay, well, I mean, maybe a little bit, a few other words added in there, but you know what I'm saying. They'd rather have Caesar as their king. They'd rather have a man as their king than God. That was their problem way back in the Old Testament. They wanted a man king instead of a God king. The problem is that with, with that is what man gives, man can take away. If God is the author of your freedom, then, then only God can take it away from you, right? All right, well, anyways, let's go on. They answered him, We be of Abraham's seed, and we're never in bondage to any man. How sayest thou, You shall be made free? Jesus answered them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Whosoever committeth sin is the servant of sin. That's the problem. All of us, before salvation, were the servant of sin. Some people, even as Christians, believe that, you know, I'm only human. I'm just a man. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to sin. Because I'm only human. Are we having... Are we, are we soaring on eagle's wings yet? The Bible says what? They that are born of God, what? Doth not commit sin. Because they are born of God. And his seed remaineth in them. What is his seed? The word of God. Remember the parable of the sower who went for sowing seed? What was that seed? It was the word of God. And when the word of God falls on the good ground of our heart, it brings forth fruit. You know what I'm saying? Anyways, okay, I'm just, I'm just kind of answering the question, what is the seed? Alright, this is the word of God. David again said, Thy word have I hid in my heart, that I might not sin against thee. Right? Okay. All right. Anyways, let's go on. Jesus answered them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Whosoever committeth sin is the servant of sin, and the servant abideth not in the house forever. Because of sin, we're going to die. The wage of sin is death. But thank God that verse doesn't end there. That verse continues with these words. But the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus. Amen. But the Son abideth ever. Jesus is eternal. And he abides forever. Why? Why? Well, because he was without sin, right? Yes, he came into the world, but he wasn't, he wasn't brought into the world the same way you and I were. The Bible says, Wherefore, as by the sin of one man, sin entered into the world, and death by sin. Through the natural birth, the natural process of birth, the, uh, the, 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 uh, I was going to say the plague of sin was passed on to all of us. In Adam, all of us die. In Adam, all of us sin. But Christ came to undo what Adam did. All you got to do to understand what I just said is read your Bible. Take it, at it, uh, take it, uh, uh, take it as you read it. Read Romans. What Christ came to do was undo what Adam did. In Adam we die, but in Christ we live. Jesus said what? 
I came and to seek uh, and to save that which was lost. What was lost? Our ability to be what? Like God. Re re remember? In the, in the Garden of Eden, man and God used to walk together. God would come down in the cool of the day and man and God would fellowship one with another. And the reason why that could take place was because at that time, man knew no sin. Man was just as holy and pure as God was. And so God was able to come down and, and enjoy the fellowship one with another. God and man walking and talking and living together. But one day sin entered into the life of man. And what happened? Man had to hide himself. You know, man's been hiding uh, for a long time. You know, and to think that God doesn't, you know, we, we kind of fool ourselves to think that God doesn't see us. Amen. You know, Adam and Eve are hiding behind a tree in the whole garden. God just, you know, by accident came down to visit, visit with them, right? You know, in the whole garden. You know, God came down right, I'm just in earshot of where Adam and Eve was, but he didn't find them. He said, where are Hey, Adam, where are you? Hey, Eve, Eve, hey, Eve. He didn't have to do that. He knew exactly where they were. The only reason why he called out to them was he wanted to hear it. He, and he, he asked them, he said, what have you done? He wanted to hear it from themselves. Uh, God, uh, I messed up. But you know, man didn't do that. Man said, God, the, the woman you gave me, she made me do it. The devil made me do it. Are you calling your wife the devil? <laughs> you know, whatever. That, that's just having fun there, okay? The devil made me do it. My husband made me do it. Now, I, I can understand sometimes, you know, the husband... Not treating a wife uh, right or whatever. Uh, she might get mad and throw a dish at him. What was that? That was a boomerang. Oh, it was a flying saucer. <laughs> that, that, that's better. It's a flying saucer. What kind of saucer was it? You know, it was a, it was a uh, Nortaki saucer. Uh, or a, you know. All right, let's go on. Are we having fun yet? I'm just about done, really. I haven't even got out of my... He said, If the Son therefore shall make you free, you shall be free indeed. Now I know for some people this is an absolute impossibility. And to those that would say that this is an impossibility... It is only a manifestation of a lack of what? Knowing God. Those that are fighting for their freedom means what? They're not free. Right? Why are you fighting for something you already have? We're not to fight for it. We're to stand fast in it. We are to what? Make sure we don't get dragged back into the bondage that we once were in. That's what he said. Stand fast therefore in the liberty wherein Christ makes us free. And don't be entangled again with the yoke of bondage. Don't go back. Go forward. Don't go down, go upward. You know what I'm saying? Refuse to lose. Refuse to go back to being what you were before Christ found you. Refuse to live the same way. Man, I'm glad today I don't have to live the same way I used to live. When I was abound in my sin. I'm glad today that God has given me a greater power. 
A power that, that, that enables me to do what? To do all things through Christ Jesus. I can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth me. Amen. What does that mean? It means, well, I can go out and get drunk today, right? No. It means I don't have to go out and get drunk today. It means I can say no to what? Every weight and sin that does so easily beset me. I don't have to be the victim of sin any longer. I can make sin my victim. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> All right. To understand what it means to be free, we have to be able to answer the question, what does freedom mean? To help us find the answer, we look to the Word of God. In the Word of man, there are types of freedom. There's political freedom. There's economic freedom. There's social freedom. All of these are important. There is the freedom of the will, which philosophers discuss. And it's the freedom, with the, the freedom of the will, is the freedom that is used most, most often to destroy ourselves. My freedom of choice is the freedom, our freedom of choice, freedom of will, is the one that we use most, most often to destroy our own life. It's my life. I'll do what I want with it. You know what I'm saying? But according to the word of God, there is a special freedom that is found only in Jesus Christ. Again, the Bible says, Stand fast therefore in the liberty wherein or wherewith Christ hath made us free and be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. This special freedom Paul speaks about that is found only in Christ. The Apostle Paul summarizes in verses 13 and 15 of this same chapter where he said, For brethren, you have been called unto liberty. Only use not liberty for an occasion to the flesh, but by love serve one another for all. The law is fulfilled in one word. Even this thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. He said, but if ye bite and devour one another, take heed that ye be not consumed one of another. This special freedom that is found in Christ and in Christ only is the freedom to love and serve one another. The freedom to love and serve one another. The freedom to do what? The freedom to be everything that we ought to be. And to do everything that we ought to do with our life. We only have one life. And we're going to either live it for ourselves or we're going to live it for others. Jesus chose to live his life for others. He said what? I lay down my life for my sheep. And because I lay it down, he said, guess what? I have the power to take it up again. Jesus tells us that if we would give our life to him, if we would just surrender our life to him, we are going to find our life. He said that if we keep it to ourselves, we're going to lose it. And so the greatest thing that we can do with our life is give it to God. And when we give our life to God, guess what? He will help us to serve one another and to love one another. And what a wonderful land that will be. Amen. Heaven's going to be wonderful. Because up there, there is not going to be no more envy. Up there, there's not going to be any more jealousy. Up there, there's not going to be any more vying uh, for the top position. You know what I'm saying? I want to be king. I want to be, I want to be, you know, I was listening to that little commercial. Uh, when I grow up, I want to be, you know what I'm saying? And it, of course, it had to do with uh, recycling. I don't want to be a piece of trash when I grow up, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, have you heard that on the radio? No? When I grow up, I want to be a football stadium. 
when I grow up, I want to be this and I want to be that. I can't remember all the things, but it, it, it said, I said, when I grow up, I don't want to be a true So recycle me. You know, all your plastics and all. Man. Man, what about, what about us as human beings? You know, they, they put more importance on a piece of plastic than they do on people. You know what I'm saying? They want, to save, they want to save the whales and the fish. But what about that little baby on the inside of that mother? They want to kill it. The state of Illinois has made it, has made it its, uh, its purpose to uh, right there in uh, Fairview Heights. Their goal is to what? Abort 11,000 or more than 11,000 babies this year. Kill them. Just kill them. Man, what a wonderful goal that is. You know what I'm saying? That's what I want to be when I grow up. I want to be that kind of a goal. You know what I'm saying? Sounds like something good, doesn't it? But man, we got to save the frog. We can't do this because there's a toad out there. You know what I'm saying? They want to humanize uh, all the animals in the wilderness and dehumanize the, the little baby in the womb. Well, they can do what they want to do, but you know what? I don't want to be, I wouldn't want to be an abortionist and stand before God one day. I wouldn't want to work in an abortion hospital and have to stand before God one day and to know what goes on in there. And to know the lies and the deception that is put out from those places. Ooh-wee. Preacher, you you done got the meddling. I haven't met I mean, come on. No wonder we have so much murder going on in our country. So much violence going on. Man, we kill our innocent babies violently. It's not a it's not a, oh, oh, we're going to, oh, so take real good care. Treat it very, you know, I mean. And if there's anything left, they kill it. They put it in a bucket. Ain't nothing pretty about it. And we wonder, we wonder why. Well, anyways, that's not the message this morning. I'm glad I don't have to be part of that junk out there anymore. I'm looking for a city whose builder and maker is God. Unlike the Apostle John who said what? Even so, come quickly, Lord Jesus. I told somebody the other day, I said, hey, uh, it'll be all right with me. It may not be all right with my wife. There's a lot of things undone. I said, it'll be all right with me if God called me home right now. I don't have anything to live for down here. You know what I'm saying? I'm not trying to amass gold and silver. Hey, I, I'm not looking to retire. I'm not going to stop serving God when I get to a certain age. You know what I'm saying? It would be alright with me if, if while I was preaching all of a sudden, bloosh! <laughs> It can be said, he died doing what he loved to do. You know what I'm saying? All right, anyways, let's go on. I'm, I'm way over time. The special freedom is, that is found in Christ only is the freedom to love and serve one another. It also means a deliverance. A deliverance from what? Well, the Bible says, There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus hath made me free from the law of sin and death. We are called by freedom for freedom. What do you mean I'm called by freedom? For freedom, Christ and Christ alone is the true and only source of freedom. 
He calls us to freedom. To serve Him. To stand fast in the liberty wherein He made us free. And what I visualize there is standing fast against every enemy. Standing fast in the heat of the battle. When the bombs are dropping on the left and on the right, we don't run from our position. We stand in our liberty. We stand in our freedom. We stand there as a light in the heart of darkness. We stand as a symbol of what is right and good and noble and honorable. We stand uh, uh, as, a, as a symbol, as an emblem of, uh, of what freedom looks like. Amen. Freedom is not sticking a needle in your arm. Or smoking some weed. Oh, wow, man. Oh. Groovy. <laughs> totally cool and awesome, dude. Destroying the very image of God in your life. God doesn't talk that way. Freedom is being set free from the yoke of and bondage of sin. Only Jesus can break that yoke. Number two, freedom means something else. It means limiting yourself. Well, I thought freedom means I could do whatever I want when I want to do it. No, it means limiting yourself. For brethren, you have been called unto liberty. Only use not liberty for an occasion to the flesh. But by love serve one another. True freedom is not found in being able to do what you want when you want. If what you want to do is wrong. You know what I'm saying? Man, why in the world do I want to make myself an addict of all that's wrong and bad. I can think of better things to addict myself to. You know what I'm saying? Isn't there a verse in the scripture that said that these men addicted themselves to the gospel? Yes. They addicted themselves to preaching the word. They addicted themselves to doing the word. To loving God and loving their fellow man. To be willing to tell people the truth. Anybody can tell a lie. You know it's a lie because, well anyways, I don't want to get off on that. Anyways, let's go on. There is no slavery worse than being a slave to one's wrong desires. It's a self-imposed servitude. And it limits what you can do with your life. But let's go on. See, I had all that that I was going to back that up with, but for the sake of time, we're going to go on. There is no greater bondage than to be bound by your own wrong desires. That's why people are yearning to be free. Because they've used their freedom the wrong way. They've used what God gave them the wrong way. And what it did was it didn't make them free. It brought them under what? The yoke of bondage. The yoke of bondage. And so they're demanding their freedom. From what? They think that they're demanding their freedom from God, but they're not... Demanding or being free from God doesn't make you free. Because only He can set you free. You know what I'm saying? Only He can free you from the guilt and shame of your past. Only He can make you free to be able to stand in His presence uncondemned. You know, be able to stand in God's presence uncondemned is a wonderful thing. 
to hear him say, well done, good and faithful servant. Enter ye into the rest. Man, you talk about freedom. It'd be like, it'd be like a man diagnosed with cancer, being told by the doctor, you're cancer free. Whew. Man. Whew. I can't, you know, I, I just can't see him saying, oh man, I wanted that cancer. I want I wanted that sickness. No. He'll probably have this smile come on his face. And probably uh maybe even tears begin to run down his face. Tears of what? Sorrow? No. Tears of freedom. Tears of joy. Knowing, man, I don't have to go through what this thing said I was going to have to go through. Now, and, uh, and we hope and we pray that if there's anybody under the sound of our voice, they get that diagnosis from their doctor. You're no longer uh, full of cancer. You're cancer free. Grant it, Jesus, right now. Right now, God. Touch that one with your healing hand. Glorify your name. Oh, loving God, today, right now, you know. And we thank you for it right now. We love and appreciate you. We thank you for your healing touch but more importantly God we thank you for your wonderful love God wherewith you love us and then one last meaning that or one last answer to the question that we want to give as our sister begins to prepare the meaning of freedom is found in one word one word consecration consecration the Bible says this I say then walk ye in the spirit and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh real freedom is the act of devoting and dedicating oneself to the service and worship of God I can't think of a better reason to live than to serve him and to worship him. To turn my home into a sanctuary where he can dwell. I was going to say to turn my auto, I said sometime I look at my auto and I said, God, I'm ashamed to have other people sit in my car. You know, get busy and just whatever. But by devoting and dedicating yourself to God, you set yourself free from the bondage of the lust of the flesh. You can't satisfy this thing here. You can't. The more you give it, the more it wants. It tells you what to do. Until one day you say, you take yourself. You're going to church. This is a little struggle, isn't it? Uh, you fight it's a struggle but it's one worth winning I'd rather be like Paul who said I count all things but loss for the excellency of the knowledge of him it'll be all right maybe doll it'll be all right
if we have to heat our meat, heat our food, we have to hunt, you know, eating snakes and lizards, turtles, and fish on an open fire somewhere because we lost everything. And serving God can help you do that. Because really, what do we have in this world anyways of any lasting you know, value? Very little. But when our affections are set up there, it can't be robbed from us. There is no greater liberty. Let me go on. By doing this, you set yourself free from the bondage of the lust of the flesh that leads to the imprisonment of guilt and shame. There is no greater liberty, there is no greater emancipation than that which is found in a life of service, a life of consecration to God. Who and what are you giving yourself to this morning? Who and what are you giving the remaining days and weeks and months and years of your life? What about minutes and hours? What about the seconds? In concluding this morning, we preached this morning on what does freedom mean. And let me ask you a couple of questions in closing. Where are you? Are you standing in the liberty where with Christ makes one free or are you entangled with the yoke of bondage? Do you yearn and long to be free, not from restraint, but to have the power to do the things that are right and decent? If not, then why not? Why don't you want to do right? Why don't you want to be right? It only lets me know you're not free this morning. Well, you know, I would, I would carry my Bible, you know, out there on the street, but I'm afraid of what somebody might think about me. Well, you're not free then. You're not free. I would pray over my food at the restaurant, but I'm afraid somebody might think a little strange of me. Don't worry about it. They think strange of you already. Just the way, you know, when you come into the restaurant, they look at you, they judge you. Don't. Do I got it right? Have you ever done that? And the answer to that question is, of course we have, haven't we? Well, who does she think she is, man? I wish I could, I wish I could uh, buy or uh, uh, buy him for what he's worth and then sell him for what he thinks he's worth. You know what I'm saying? He comes in there. I don't know if I'm even doing that right. You know what I'm saying? All puffed up and whatever else. But we see it and we say, man, I wonder what they're all about. People do the same thing to us. You know what I'm saying? So the best thing we could do is, you know, when we have these thoughts go through our brain, we ought to pray for them. God, help that person. Help, you know what I'm saying? All right, anyways. What I'm really saying is don't worry about what other people think. They're going to think what they think anyways. So do what's right and good and honorable in the sight of God. Pray. Enjoy your life. Enjoy your liberty wherein Christ hath made you free this morning, and as she begins to sing, sister, we went ahead and started. As you close your eyes, Father, we endeavor to preach this morning. A little long, please forgive us and help them to forgive us. God, we're asking you to help us, to help us in all of our infirmities. Help us to see ourselves, especially as you see us, God. Help us to be honest with ourselves and truthful. Because if we can't be honest with ourselves, God, then we can't be honest with anybody else. And help us to see our real need this morning.
and help us realize, God, that our need really is you. You are our greatest need. And God, as we accept that need, God, we ask that you would meet that need and give us yourself. Give us yourself that we might, God, be able to give ourself to you the same way you give yourself to us. In Jesus' wonderful and glorious name for your glory. Amen and amen. Let's find a place to pray right now. The altar is open. God bless you. If you don't know Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior, we invite you to come this morning and let him have his way in your life. He whom the Son makes free is free indeed. Will you let him have his way this morning in your heart and in your soul? God bless you this morning. house this morning. It's good to know that we have been set free, as she sang in the song, from our sin, our sinful ways and whatever. And I'm glad to know what the true meaning of freedom is. Amen. Freedom is found in what? A life of consecration. It is uh, a deliverance from the power and yoke of bondage to sin. And uh, it is a life of limitation. In other words, we don't do what we used to do. I found something far better to do with my life than to do what I once did before. Amen. Uh, I was driving down the road. Boogity, 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 boogity. And right there in front of me was that, that, that Anheuser-Busch beer sign there on 44. And you know, it fills up and it goes and starts foaming up. And the devil says, you want one of those, don't you? I said, devil, you're stupid. Amen. 
I said, that's what I used to do when I served you. But I don't do that no more. You know what I'm saying? And I just kept on driving. Boogity, 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 boogity. Rejoicing in the liberty we're in Christ makes us free. It's been good to be in God's house. I'd like to remind you this time uh, we're going to receive the Sunday morning tithe and offering. Again, please forgive us. We were a little long this morning. If the ushers will come at this time, help us receive this. Those of you that are on Facebook, if you'd like to give online, you could do so by going to www.myntcc.org. All right, let me give that up to you again. All right, Belleville, forward slash Belleville, ill. And uh, once you get there, that'll be our, our, our website. You can get, make a, uh, a gift there and whatever. All right, but we're not going to pass the offering plate because, again, that's one way that the dreaded thing is uh, spread. So we're going to allow the ushers to stand back there. And as you leave this morning, you can give your offering then, okay? And, and please be uh, patient with us in this endeavor. We're trying to do our part, all right, to not uh, spread this thing around. So. Brother Lockhart, sir, would you please pray over the gift and the giver? And not only that, uh, will you also please pray and dismiss us in prayer? All right. And then once he's through praying, you may consider yourself dismissed and uh, feel free to give uh, in the offering as the Lord leads you to give. All right. God bless you, sir. Wonderful, loving, and blessed Savior, we are thankful.